Hey guys, hope you all have been well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I was thinking, I've done top five, I've done category by category, but I've never done like strictly just, I'm gonna focus on neutrals only. I'm gonna specifically talk about colors that are either brown, beigey, sort of like the baseline of color with blushes and what that looks like on my complexion. So I'm going to be swatching four blushes for you and I'm I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons between them just so you can pick the perfect one for you obviously i don't have the full collection but i do have ones here in front of me that i love and would highly recommend that you check out for reference i am an nc35 on the lighter days and an nc37 pretty much the remainder of the year so if you're interested in my thoughts on these blushes as well as some cheek swatches i hope you decide to stay tuned we're gonna get straight into it all right so the first color here is in copper tone and this is described as a peach brown this isn't quite as hyped as i think it should be because i find that this is the type of color that would be really popular but you don't hear too much about it and if you're wondering this is just a regular matte formulation from the regular powder blush line so I'm gonna load it up on my brush here and you know how I do these swatches I go on with one application and then I build it up after just so you can see the intensity of my complexion so first one here and you really can't go wrong with MAC blushes they're kind of like a mid-end price point in comparison to just cosmetics in general you have drugstore you have affordable you kind of have like mid-range you have high-end and then you have luxury and before i continue with that train of thought this is the first layer of copper tone and so going back to price points for blushes this is pretty middle of the road it's not quite expensive as like high-end nars or luxury brands like tom ford but it is a few more dollars say than something like ColourPop, which is more affordable if you have tan skin somewhere along the lines of like my complexion and maybe you have melba maybe you have gingerly but maybe it's not hitting quite like you want it to give this a swatch because it might just be what you're looking for now you do see a bit of glow on my skin but that's not from the blush that's from my highlighter so look a little bit more in the backs of my cheeks heavy swatch i know but beautiful nonetheless the combination of the peach and the brown together sort of makes this skin look a little sunburnt so it's going to be wonderful for the summer season but if you are tan i think you can use this every single day of the week it's it's going to be stunning and for reference this is what the product looks like head on so we're gonna move in to Gingerly and I wanna show you a comparison between Copper Tone and Gingerly. Yes, I know, they are very close to each other. Gingerly here is described as a Capri bronze shade. I'm not really sure what the heck that means. Is Capri like as in the ocean color blue type of thing? And so that's the kind of look you're gonna get when you're in the sun. And I do think it's a little appropriate if that's where they're going with the description. So if you have Gingerly and you feel like maybe it's not Giving you enough color then I would go with copper tone because it is slightly deeper so I'm going to apply gingerly on my brush here and I have a rather nice dent in this blush I've had it for so long and while I'm applying the blush I would like to mention this is a sheer tone shimmer blush and I'm gonna describe what that means at least in my opinion and from my experience look at the way that it blends if you've ever tried a sheer tone blush it's next level blendability it's next level like creaminess and soft texture it's almost like the difference between a regular uh, loose setting powder and then you have those finely milled setting powders they're both powders and they both can do amazing things but there's something a little extra with those more finely milled products so as i load my brush up here is a look at the first application for the gingerly blush here and usually that first application is enough for me but let's built it up so you can see just so effortless you know so here's a second layer of gingerly and this is what it looks like head-on 
So out of the four, these are the most alike, like I mentioned when um, I was comparing the two. So I do want to talk about the color differences as well as what complexions I think would suit better. I don't think the average person would recognize that I have two different blushes on. However, if you like more of a bronzy look where the warm golden look is pretty much the dominant look you're going to get from a blush, then I would go with Gingerly. I think it's truer to the sun-kissed look where I feel like copper tone is going to give you more of a sun burnt look. As you can see, there's a bit more red to it as opposed to gingerly where the bronze on this side is really sticking out at you. As far as complexion is concerned, I think the range of shades that can use a blush like this very easily, I think they're going to be the same. Um, fair complexions definitely can use this, but with a lighter hand. And so I would say about an NC30, NC25 is where you want to start considering maybe looking at one of these blushes for your every day wear and I would say maybe about an NC44 just to get enough color to where you're not wasting the product by having to dig through it all the time I think it's going to give you enough of a flush for an everyday look so in a way it really boils down to your color preference do you want to look sun-kissed or do you want to look slightly sunburnt so final look for these blushes here we have copper tone which is a matte powder blush and on this side, we have the ever famous Sheer Tone Blush in Gingerly. So for this series of muted natural neutral colors, we have another sheer tone. So you know this is going to blend like a dream. And this is in Blush Baby. This is another matte shade. And this one is described as a beige pink. So if you're on the hunt for a pink that just really kind of, it just flatlines, it just barely, barely goes over the pink thresholds, then what am I doing? Something that barely goes over the pink threshold, I think this might be something you want to look into. This was one of the more popular shades, at least for the pinks. I remember a time when I heard about Blush Baby. So here we have it on the brush. Let's apply. It's just the most subtle flush of pink. Cause pink can be a very scary color, even on tan complexions. And I feel like if you're medium range, nearly all blushes look good on you, but it can be quite difficult to find the perfect pink for you. And I feel like this is just, mm, it's so good. It's such a perfect pink. Second pass. See that? It's so pretty. Now I will say complexion wise, you probably won't be able to go as deep with this shade. I mean, obviously I'm getting color with my tan complexion. However, if you are above an NC40, I highly, highly recommend that you go into store if possible and get a swatch of it, or maybe look up some videos or some photos online to see what other people who have the same complexion as you think of this blush. It is softer than gingerly and copper tone, and because it's a pink, you have to be careful because of that ashiness factor that pinks and purples tend to have. And I think that there are going to be quite a few people out there that have never seen or heard of Blush Baby and are on the hunt for their perfect like neutral pink that are looking at this color right now and being like, oh my god, that that's so good. And you know what? You're not wrong. It really is such a good shade. It is so, so pretty against tan complexion. Like, oh, it's, it's so good, right? Like, I don't even need to explain myself. Look at it. It's good. All right, here we go with the ever famous mineralized blush from MAC. You all know what it is. One, two, three. Warm soul. Yes, yes. And I do have the original one. So, uh, don't hate me too much if the formulation is not quite the same that is not on my part that is on theirs so here we have warm soul yes i do still have it so this one here is described as a mid-tone beige with golden shimmer so there's not a lot of color going on here you're getting a beige i'm gonna compare and layer the mac glow play blush in so natural here's why don't they just kind of look related? Annabelle, that can't be true. Guess what the description is for this blush? Golden beige. Mid-tone beige with golden pearl. Golden beige. 
So now it's just a preference and formulation. So do you want a mineralized blush or would you prefer this glow play blush, which is a little bit more of a cream to powder finish. So I'm going to do the swatch comparison on my hand and then I'm going to layer it on my cheeks. So I had to turn the light down some just so you can see it because again it's it's rather light on my complexion but on my left side I have the glow play blush in so natural and then here is the mineralized blush in warm soul. The warm soul does come off a little bit more darker but I really don't think that you need both of them. It just boils down to do you prefer a powder that's a little bit more glowy shimmery or would you like a cream to powder finish that is a bit more sheeny so you know I'm, I'm trying to do my best here trying to give you the best information so I'm going to hmm. so let's do the glow play blush first and I tend to use a stippling brush this is from elf and the other brush that I've been using is my Mac 116 yes it is 116 color wise it's pretty self-explanatory if you've ever used a foundation that was labeled beige it usually means that it's neutral but you are definitely able to see that pink undertone so you see how subtle that is and I am going quite ham in here okay so I think the cap in terms of complexion and shade range you might want to end where I am just so you're not wasting your money you know that's what I want I don't want you to waste your money as you can see on my complexion it's barely there and I've done three layers of this already you see that sheeny look on the skin it's so pretty there's no glitter there's no sparkle no shimmer it just has a bit of that natural kind of oil pulling through your skin look and now we're going to be layering warm sole on top for two reasons this is a powder and i prefer to put powders on top of more creamier products and secondly this is slightly deeper so i'm going to get more of a true color payoff with this so do you see that there is no color difference it looks exactly the same <laughs> It looks exactly the same as just having so natural on my complexion. There's no color difference. There really isn't. I'm just setting the same color. And that was already two layers. So I'm gonna do one more and show you, like I'm gonna load my brush on and show you that no matter how much I put on, it's, it's just like, this is the best it's gonna get basically. So for those of you who are deeper than an NC37, again, just be just be a little careful. If you can go in and swatch it, that'll be the best way to see how it looks like on your complexion. But having to use so much of your blush just to get a tiny bit of pigment doesn't make sense. This is more than I would use, but even then I would still have to apply a little bit more than I would something like a copper tone. But this is what the blush looks like head on it's it's so pretty like it really is such a natural blush color so here we have the final look of these blushes on this side we have the sheer tone blush in blush baby and then on this side we have a double whammy um the first layer that i put down was the glow play blush in so natural and then right on top basically matching the color underneath it is the mineralized blush in warm soul and again one more time here we have it face on Thank you guys again for joining me in this video. I hope you found it informative and hopefully gives you a better idea of how to maneuver through the MAC blushes. There's just so many options at MAC that it can be overwhelming. And so with what I know and what I have, I always want to give you the best information so you ain't wasting no, no money on it. If you guys like this makeup look, be sure to check me out on Instagram. That is where I post all of my makeup looks along with all the products in the caption. So be sure to check the description box down below. It'll be the first link there. Thank you again for joining me in this video and until the next one, I hope you all are doing well, taking great care of yourselves. I will see you all next time. Bye guys.